Okay, this is a bizarre QA question. It was based just about like guiding principles and kind of the way that I, I try to live my life. So this will have combinations of philosophy and religion. So if you're not a fan of either of those two topics, by all means, thank you for clicking. Don't hit like or dislike. Just you can hit pause and jump to another video. That's fine. So. <clears throat> My folks are what are referred to as holiday Catholics. So they would show up for, you know, Easter and Christmas Eve Mass. Maybe Thanksgiving. That was about it. So, of course, with them being that level of Catholic, when I was born, I was baptized. I did, I, I guess, they did like the, the, the drips on the head, not the full, full submersion. I guess I did uh, urinate on the father who was doing the baptism. And by urine, I mean I, my diaper was wet. I didn't, like, visibly pee on him, from what I've been told. <sighs> so there was at least some level of, you know, of a, of a pseudo-spiritual, you know, there is something beyond what is we physically see for most of my growing up. But I never really went to church regularly until I dated a girl who was a Methodist. So I went to church pretty much every Sunday. Was not a fan of the services. But, you know, it's a big part of her life. I'll suck it up and I'll go, with, go along with it. Not a big deal. <clears throat> so then, after we split, now I'm pretty much in my, in my college years. So I've pretty much gone through like 20 years of my life. Right there. In less than two minutes. From my time in college, I took philosophy classes. Compared to religion classes. I also do, my background is of course in psychology and biology. But I took classes from anthropology to zoology. So I tried to make sure that I took everything, just you don't know what it is you're going to have a passion for until you actually sit, sit through it. So from philosophy, lots of interesting things. I really fell in love with the work of uh, Rene Descartes, or Rene Descartes, as some people refer to it as. He, of course, was a, was a French philosopher, uh, also a mathematician, because back in the day, you were a philosopher and a mathematician. Same people people like, like Aristotle, Socrates, uh, Pythagoras, a lot of them always had a philosophical background, while at the same time going, oh yeah, the way you can structure your thinking also makes sense from looking from the world from a mathematical standpoint. So that was always an interesting concept. And actually one of the books that I've got through my Audible is actually, it is The Discourse of Method, which is Rene Descartes' work, which is pretty much him describing to people how it is that he thinks and how through using that method he understands the Son of God. So it's, it's him telling, well, him, well, it's actually him describing to you, because he doesn't actually say, here's, he doesn't say, follow this. He says, here's my thought process, and here's how I got to here. He even actually expressly states, you know, that I'm describing how I came to this conclusion based on my methodology. You do not need to adopt my methodology. Just understand what it is that I'm doing to get to that location. That was interesting. It's really interesting. I think period of religion, you learn a lot about, you have your, uh, your, uh, well, mostly the, the Abrahamic religions, which of course would be Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, as well as all of the Eastern ones. And all the Eastern ones were undeniably fascinating. Whether it's the process of reincarnation, where, you know, you're here in this caste system, as you die, you go up, 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 to hit that one moment of nirvana, you go back all the way down again which pseudo has that feeling of like you could base it in physics. Energy and matter never created or destroyed. It's kind of it's the recycling effectively. Even though from a physics standpoint, as your energy is moving, you're constantly releasing heat. Heat is still a form of energy. But, you know, that was interesting. <coughs> then the people who did feng shui, most people call it geomancy, which is the idea of the location of certain objects in a house affect the overall energy flow of the house. Okay. Also studied Tai Chi. I still I do I do yoga right now, but I'm doing it with DDP, so it's not the spiritual practice, it's more of the physical practice. And through Tai Chi, lots of interesting, unique things you hear is ways of doing subtle movements and how that actually feels throughout the body. And it's really counterintuitive to the way most people do any sort of physical activity where it's more of a Tai Chi is more flowing motions, letting letting the earth kind of help 
guide what it is that you're doing instead of you imposing your will on something else. Which was really interesting. And then, of course, from that came the study of uh, Bushido and the Samurai. Uh, Tom Cleary did a nice collection of books called like, Code of the Samurai, Soul of the Samurai. And they had these really nice, you know, taking a collection of readings and, and things and laying them all in a nice sequential fashion. So as the, well, I've heard either Hakagiri or Hakaguri was interesting as well. That's essentially another collection of, kind of like samurai words of wisdom. So kind of like a Proverbs and a Psalms, but more Bushido-based. And Miyamoto Musashi's Book of the Five Rings, uh, Yagyu Minamori, who did the Life-Giving Sword, which is the exact opposite, in theory, to the Book of the Five Rings, as well as Sun Tzu's The Art of War, which Audible has a great version. It's the Blackstone version, but just the middle is good. There's a person who's constantly trying to describe everything in terms that are more understandable for a Western audience, which is tire garbage, because that woman's voice is horrible. The guy actually reads the actual book itself. is actually really good, as well as things like uh, The Unfettered Mind. So a lot of the Bushido Confucianism stuff, love reading that, because it gives you a really different viewpoint of things. Especially when they describe how Christianity Catholicism is going to destroy them because they looked at that as the, the Europeans trying to destroy them from a cultural standpoint. And I was like, well, makes sense, given the way, you know, Japan and China have kind of, you know, dur during a while they kind of insulate themselves against the outside world. And they saw that as being a way that it's going to degrade them from a cultural standpoint. Unique historical uh, perspectives there, too. <sighs> so I did a lot of that. Oh, and also, too, around the time, they did a lot of the neo-pagan. So there was a while where, if you were to go into the New Age section of Barnes & Noble, if a new book came out, I, I probably had an access to it, probably picked it up, probably read through it, and I found them to be pretty interesting, unique and different takes on the way things are done. Because one of the things, one of the things that I read very early, I want to say it was from the Hakagiri, it was there was a, a student who was having his teacher talk to him, because interrupting him, saying like, "What about this? What about this? What about that?" So then, the, the teacher was like, "Well, let me pour you a cup of tea." I'm paraphrasing this a lot, <clears throat> and he's pouring into the teacup. The tea begins to overflow. The student's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like. You cannot enjoy my tea if your cup is already full. So the idea of trying to walk into things with an open mind, trying to get an understanding of someone else's viewpoint, which is very, very counterintuitive the way most people try to do things. That's why even when I'm at work, my boss is telling me, he's like, yeah, you need to be more direct. And I was like, well, I want to hear what someone else is saying. And I want them to get their point across before I jump in. So I'll wait, my, I'll wait till there's that moment where I can say something. So very common I get talked over because people don't want to listen. They just want to get their point out instead of actually going, okay, here's what's going on, and then contribute. Or sometimes just, here's what's going on. That's fascinating. I wouldn't have thought about it that way. Let's see if your methodology works. <clears throat> so from all the different New Age books... Lots of ones were on the uh, energy manipulation and energy vampirism. I also had a decent amount of books that had, like, here's how you do the, here's how you make tinctures, which are unique from a historical standpoint. Showing the, I think it was the Staff of Hermes, is what we normally consider to be the, the sign of a pharmacy. Of course, there's is, is, is the spike with the snake trap around it. So it's unique looking at, looking at, from a historical standpoint, from an apothecary, and how that worked into some of the earlier pagan religions and how that's kind of been morphed some in the pharmaceutical industry. And then from the Bushido side, from the samurai thought, there's a book that's called uh, Soul Sword. It was a combination of someone who was Christian who also used some of the Bushido learnings. So Christianity was the core and added on to that was a layer of uh, Bushido. Which ironically you could take Except from that, something very close to the Jedi Code. 
I know that's probably quite a leap from a combination of Christianity and Bushido, the Jedi Code. <clears throat> but if you look at, you know, you have the, you know, there is no ignorance, there's only knowledge, there's no anger, only peace. And it's all the, here's what the standard human emotion is. Here's your hate, here's your fear, here's your anger. And then it's, well, here's your peace, here's your tranquility. So it has these two highly diametric, highly diametrically opposed options. Where it's like, you know, do you walk the dark side or the light side? Okay, interesting. Different way of looking at it. <clears throat> With a human aspect, there's always fight or flight. Are you going to fight or are you going to run away? From the Jedi standpoint, it's fight is the absolute last option. That's why you use subterfuge. You know, if I can do something to talk to you and get out of the fight, it's best for both of us. That's also a basis on some of the work of uh, Sun Tzu, where he found that it was easier to win the fight without ever drawing a sword. He was more for mental exercise, which really spoke to my psychology background and philosophy backgrounds. Like I probably said, this is going to be a hard one to get because it's going to jump all over the place. <clears throat> so I spent a lot of my time kind of more on the, the pagan side of things, which is religion a la carte because you can just grab bits and pieces here and there and craft your own idea of how things of how things work based on the experience you've currently had so at the end of the day that's kind of your perception shapes your reality and your perception is based on all of your experience in the past good bad or indifferent <clears throat> and then it came time taking that really hard look at you know, is what I'm doing making me happy? I'm not content. Content for two different things. Content is, you know, everything's fine. Could it be better? Yeah. Am I going to push for it to be better? No, not really. This is, this is fine. I'm, I'm content. Where happy is more of the, you know, things are going really well. I'm doing this to make myself better. From the Bushido standpoint, a lot of that was where you are today that's okay. Where are you going to be tomorrow? What the day after? What's after that? So there's more of that constant trajectory. But I kind of hit a point from a spiritual standpoint that I was like, well, I've read a tremendous amount of books, whether it's from a philosophy standpoint, religion standpoint, spirituality standpoint. It's like, I kind of just feel like I'm stunted. The woman who's now my wife, she actually went to an organized church. Okay. Christian faith. And I was like, all right. I will actually go to this church. <clears throat> it's a huge part of her life. And, you know, she's been my life. So I want to understand, a better, better understand for what it is that she does and what she believes. Now, prior to that church, I had known a tremendous amount of hypocrites who ascribed themselves to be either Christian or Catholic. And it was like, well, you know, a lot of them in college where they would talk about, oh, you're, you're a horrible person because you're not going to go to church. But they were the ones who would be out Saturday night partying and then hit a 2 o'clock service. So Sunday, they were religious. The rest of the week, they were, they were every bit as bad as the people they were looking down upon. Yeah. <clears throat> And then uh, a friend of mine, he was, uh, he was a dad for about 40 minutes. I've ever gone to a baby funeral. It's, It, it, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's probably one of the... Next to my wife having the, 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 the miscarriage, this was probably one of the hardest things I think I've ever had to do. And he, of course, is, 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 is Catholic. So when I was trying to, you know, 
be there for him. You know, I'm thinking, oh, I've got all this. You know, I've I'm a strong individual. And, you know, he's there, and I try to say something to him, and I just break down. And he's the one who gives me a hug and says, you know, it's going to be okay. Where did, where did all this strength come from? This whole time, I've been cultivating my own spirituality, my own strength, from an internal standpoint thinking that that's actually where all my power came from, that it came from myself, it came from who I am, and it was a way that I could cultivate it. But it was his religion, and it was his belief that, you know, yeah, he was a dad for 40 minutes, but he was dead for 40 minutes, and he loved every moment of that. And their child is, is in heaven. And it was, there are moments when you look back at your life and you hit these just profound moments. And you don't really realize until you do self-reflection, then you look back upon them and you go, wow, you know, at that moment, that was the moment that, that changed the path that I was on. And then, you know, going to, to church with my wife, I was like, you know what? these people actually believe and, and live what it is that they're reading. And they actually do it. It's not just lip service, they actually do it. But it's fellowship, it's help one another, they do it. It's the world's going to look down to find you for what it is you believe. Yeah, true. And then a lot of it also has to do with the, the peace and love aspect and hope. And compassion. When you look out into the world, you don't see a lot of that. You see a lot of, of, of hate, greed, malice, fear. I think it's the people who cultivate that and they become rich. Super rich. If you look at almost anybody from a media standpoint, fear, hate, anger, people love that. Just look at the internet. Look at the comments that you tend to see. You know, I might try to be kind of sarcastic every now and then with certain things. And there are times I just get lit up on the internet. And that's, you know, you step your foot out out of the internet to give your opinions. They're going to their opinions back. It's, it's how it is. You can't project out without people projecting back at you. I understand. So I started looking at, you know, the whole totality of the things that I had learned and all, like I said before, your perceptions, based, your reality based upon your perception, your perception based upon your experiences. And I was like, you know, Christianity makes the most sense. When you actually read through it, and people go, oh, there's been all these wars. My kingdom is not of this world. It's more of the, this is the temporary thing. That's the permanent thing. You know, don't hate people. Love people. You disagree with them. That's fine. Nowhere in there does it say you have to agree with everyone's life choices. But it's the separation of the choice from the individual. That's the hard part. That's what runs counterintuitive to, to man's nature itself. Uh, recently, Ronda Rousey, she's going to be a, in a documentary. She talked about how man's just natural aggressive tendencies. Well, think about aggressive tendencies. They normally don't have good outcomes. Maybe there's a rationale behind that. Maybe when people are full of hate and full of anger, good things tend to not come out of it. Maybe there actually is a different direction that if humanity were to kind of go more towards that way, things would be a lot better. 
yes, I know people can say that, but when, when someone is, is killed, people come together. Yes, tragedies do make people look and go, yeah, this is messed up. We need to, to change what it is that we're doing. But the big difference is, the world will not change if you refuse to change. When I do these videos, I actually look at myself. That's why the camera's up here, and I'm looking here. Because I don't have them lined up perfectly. And I thought, you know, I went back to that moment that he was the strong one. He was the one who'd undergone a tremendous loss. A loss that I, to this day, still can't fathom. But he was the one who was stronger. He was the one who endured the tragedy. And he came out better. Well, I was the person who was there to try to help him, and I couldn't. That is a true level of power. The fact that he was the one who embraced me and said that it was going to be okay. That's not why I was there. I was there to be the one to help him, to comfort him. But I couldn't. So after going to the, to the church with my wife for a while, I ended up actually making the decision that, you know what? This is the direction that makes the most sense. And it makes the most sense because it's counterintuitive to the way of humanity. So, of course, I didn't become baptized. I actually have done some, uh, actually preached a couple times there. So when it comes to the, the guiding philosophies and principles, I've gone through a lot of iterations. And I found out the basis of my experience in my background that the one that actually makes the most amount of sense actually is being Christianity. In a lot of ways, looking through the different uh, styles of, of Bushido and the different ways of Eastern culture, you do see a lot that actually correlates back. As much as people were trying to fight against Christianity to saw it as an invading force, they had a lot of things in common. Whether it was phrases like <clears throat> yeah. gird, your, gird your heart and your mind against against all forms of, of impurity and morality, lest you become overtaken by demons. That's a paraphrasing from, I want to say it wasn't the unfettered mind. But from one of the, the samurai books that I've, I've read, actually I've actually probably on my, my Audible, <clears throat> through one of them they actually had that statement but the difference was what they considered to be immoral was different. But it was still guarding your heart and your mind against things that were impure. Or else you'll be taken over by it. Which correlates back to Jedi, where it's, you know, the moment you make that, that path, start walking path on the dark side, that's it. It's, it's a slope it's angled. Once you start going down, you're going down. That's it. You know, there really is no coming back from it. Because it will become an overall consuming aspect of your life. And, yeah, been there. Been there. Been there. Now, I worked my previous job. There are lots of people who, after I met Sonny, was baptized, got married to her. They're like, you know, you're a lot nicer person now. Because like, before that, you were an insufferable prick. So sometimes people tell you that like when you're nice, but not when you're an insufferable prick. And it had this really profound impact. And it was one of those moments where you look and you go, you know, I was content with the person that I was, but I wasn't happy. I know that I, I knew that I needed to do something. I didn't know what that something was. Thought that something was, did it, and I'm like, you know what? Do I have moments where life isn't perfect? Yeah, everyone does. Doesn't matter who you are. But the moments that are good are really good. The moments that are bad, really that bad. The moments that are in the middle, yeah, they're in the middle. People ask me how I'm doing, 
I always say adequate, satisfactory. If I'm doing great, I'll say I'm doing great. But more often than not, I'm in the middle. My, my dips aren't as bad as they used to be, but my risers are a lot greater than they used to be. So that essentially is, in a nutshell, my, my guiding principles. I have a feeling I'll probably get a lot of negative comments, and that's that's how it is when you open yourself up. Probably some positive comments, and again, too, that's how it is when you open these sorts of things up. Now, of course, the next Q&A that I'm going to do is going to be a lot easier to get through. It's the, the music genre one. Having decided what the next versus fight is going to be, I'm actually talking back and forth between a QA and a versus. Because it keeps the verses on the fresher side and it gives me more time to work on them. 